What up everybody, it's Kyle from Blue Ridge Outfitters and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to hot wax your skis or snowboard at home. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to strip off all the old and dry wax that's left on the base of your ski. The easiest way to do that is with a nice coarse wire brush. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to scrape it until all that old dry wax comes off the base of the ski. After you get done stripping off all the old wax from the base of your skis and snowboard, it's time to choose which wax to melt back on. So here at Blue Ridge Outfitters, we offer three different types of wax. The first one being universal wax. This wax is an all temp wax that is good for temperatures outside from anywhere from 10 degrees to 34 degrees. It's just kind of your middle of the road, plain Jane set of tires if you're talking about a car. It'll get you from point A to point B but it's not really a performance based product and they're not like that performance tire. But if you're looking for more performance, we offer two waxes. We offer a cold temperature wax and a warm temperature wax. The cold temperature wax is made for temperatures for anywhere from five degrees to 20 degrees. You wanna use this if you're skiing in really cold weather and it's gonna give you that much more performance that that universal wax or the hot wax really isn't gonna give you. So in those warmer conditions, like those spring slush days that, you know, at the end of the season, you want to put on a warm water, a warm weather wax. And that, why is that is because it'll give you better performance and might melts at a hotter rate um, during those hotter slushy days when, you know, it might hit 40 degrees. And it just gives you that much more performance when the snow's already slow. So once you choose the wax, it's time to warm up the iron and start melting and waxing away. So once your iron's warmed up, you're going to grab that in your wax. And I usually start at the tip of the ski and go in a zigzag motion and melt the wax from tip to tail. This way, just kind of getting a nice coverage on the ski with a nice little stream of wax. This kind of, it doesn't really matter how you put on and how you drip on the wax as we call it, because what you're going to do after this is you're going to take the iron and spread the, all that wax you just melted on from edge to edge to make sure the whole base has a thick coating of wax into the ski. You're going to want to spread this wax around for a couple of minutes just to ensure that the ski or the ski base got a full coating of wax. As you see, I'm making sure all that wax is spread throughout the whole base of the ski and making sure there are no clumps on it and that it's spread evenly across the whole base of the ski. Once you get done waxing the base of your ski to where you feel like the wax is spread out enough and thick enough, it's time to let the wax sit and dry onto the base of the ski. This will take about 15 to 30 minutes to ensure that when it comes time to scraping the ski, it's going to come off in one nice easy scrape. But until then, it's a good time to start waxing your other set of skis or your other ski, or just go in and grabbing a cold drink out of the fridge and waiting a little bit. So once the wax is cooled off enough to scrape, it's time to grab your scraper, which can be really anything. We use metal scrapers here at Blue Ridge Outfitters, but you can use anything from a hard piece of plastic like plexiglass to a metal scraper to if times get real tough, I've used a credit card or my driver's license before. They all get the job done and they all scrape the wax off the same. But once you grab your scraper, it's time to get to scraping. So. Once you've grabbed your scraper and you're ready to scrape, there's just a couple of things you need to remember before you get to scraping. First, always scrape from the tip of the ski to the tail of the ski. It just lets the wax come off a little easier for some odd reason. The second and most important rule to remember in my opinion is always have a trash can close by because waxing skis is a mess and you're gonna wanna clean it up as fast and quickly as possible. But once you're ready to scrape, all you have to do is keep solid pressure from the tip and tail and just bring it back. As you can see, that wax is peeling off nicely, just in nice flakes, and that's just what you wanna see. Something like that come off the base of the ski. You're gonna do this until the wax stops coming off as you scrape, and once that's the case, it's time to start finishing up the waxing job. So once you get done scraping the excess wax off the base of your ski or snowboard, technically you're ready to go hit the slopes. 
But here at Blue Ridge Outfitters, we do a couple more finishing touches just to ensure that high quality wax job. The first thing being is rubbing a finishing brush, uh, finishing brush over the base of the ski. This just ensures to smooth the wax out evenly across the whole base of the ski to give you a smoother ride down the slopes. So just like scraping the ski, you're gonna go from tip to tail and just run it down the base of the ski, smoothing out all that wax. Well, once you get done using your finishing brushes, if you choose to do so, your wax job is done. You're ready to go hit the slopes. That's how easy it is to wax your skis at home. After watching this video, if you feel like you wanna try waxing your skis at home, stop by Blue Ridge Outfitters and talk to us where we'll get you set up with all the home waxing needs that you need.